Hello, I'm Richard Jack Smith, film critic for Real Talk Movie Reviews. Today I've got something a little different for you folks. My first audiobook review, and it's of Alien 3, based on a screenplay by William Gibson. The production was produced and directed by Dirk Maggs. It stars Michael Bean and Lance Henriksen. Now when it comes to Alien 3, people immediately think of the 1992 film starring Sigourney Weaver in which she was thrown onto a prison planet and things spiraled out of control. An alien came out of nowhere, literally, and that was that. But what you might not know is that this particular production of Alien 3 was based on a number of different ideas from different writers. There were a great many screenplays produced leading up to what finally came out in 1992 and one of those was by William Gibson. It ultimately didn't get made but some of the ideas in embryonic form found their way into the film in various incarnations. So why the audiobook now for an unproduced screenplay? Well, the answer quite simply is this. Alien 3, directed by David Fincher, was one of the worst films ever made. Terrible in every respect, bad editing. Terry Rawlins, great editor. On Alien 3, bad editor, simple as that. It had a lot of issues. There wasn't a finished screenplay, and that shows in the final product. But more importantly, it did away with certain key characters in a manner that was disrespectful namely Newt, who was played in the original Aliens film by Carrie Henn, and then Michael Bean as Corporal Hicks. And so we come to this new audiobook released in 2019, and Michael Bean is back as Hicks. He's roused from cryosleep, only to be told that the aliens are very much alive and kicking, and are looking for new hosts. Regarding the basic premise behind this Alien 3, it does take a little bit of swallowing. After all, you might ask yourself, how do these creatures come to be? Well, that has to do with Bishop, played by Lance Henriksen. He was attacked by the Alien Queen at the end of Aliens. And indeed, the last ten minutes of Aliens are recapped right at the beginning of this audiobook, which I thought was a nice touch. It has to do with, again, the evolution of the alien species and how that is evolving into this new hybrid form. A form which, as it turns out, can take over human beings as well as other animals. And this was an idea that got played with and mutated for that horrible 1992 David Fincher movie. Again, getting back to the audio drama. Regarding sound, music and voice, I would say that there are certain key things that do work here. I thought, well, there's not a lot of Michael Bean's voice in the first hour and that got me a little bit worried. They brought in a new actress to do Newt's voice and that kind of grated on me a little bit. When she says Ripley, it sounds like Whippy, you know, child going down the slide on an amusement park and it got a little bit much. But Bishop, Lars Henriksen, gets a uh, I would say between the two, the lion's share of um, of the dialogue in the first hour, but that changes for the second hour in Hicks. When he finally gets hold of a gun, albeit one with only with five shots, it's back to clobbering some xenomorphs. The plot for Alien 3 isn't anything special. It's not something that's going to drastically change how people feel about the Alien franchise. In fact, one could argue very much that the finished film that got made as Alien Resurrection definitely got inspired by this particular screenplay. You can see the, the, the way that um, the samples are mutated and manipulated in the lab. Again, it brings back a lot of those you know, memories of Brad Dorif and Jay Freeman as a scientist in Jean-Pierre Jeunet's film. There's some good voice work here. In particular, Samantha Conklin as Spence makes a very good impression. Well, she would right off the bat, and um, I'm going to leave you to discover that particular moment. 
But there's a real sense, I would say, in the sound effects as well, reminded me a lot of the Alien Isolation video game. Specifically the way the monsters hiss, you know, that, 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 that was very true to how that particular game came across. With the music we have James Hannigan taking over scoring duties and you can definitely hear some of James Horner and Elliot Gonthal's influence on his score with the way that he drives the, the rhythms of the action and creates a suspense in the much more quiet sections leading up to something happening. It's not a particularly great Alien score, it's not going to stand up there with Jerry Goldsmith's Alien or even John Frizzle's Alien Resurrection which definitely has its moments apart from one near the end which is horrible. As an overall piece, Alien 3 gave me what I most wanted from a continuation of the franchise and that was Michael Bean. I am a huge Michael Bean fan. Ever since I first got on the net, one of the first sites I went to was Word About Bean. Check it out if you haven't come across it. This lady Kay reviews most of Michael Bean films up to the year 2000 and pr pretty much anything with Michael Bean I will watch, good, bad, indifferent. This was the Alien 3 project more than the other screenplays, based on what I've read, that really gave him the, the meat and potatoes in terms of this character. Even the Vincent Ward unproduced script, which I quite like, doesn't feature Hicks. But William Gibson allows this character to grow. He's, he, he, it's a, there's a self-referential quality to this, which I think fans will appreciate. He does refer to some of his training, some of the events from the planet, the events of aliens. He, his voice has that kind of deep, gravelly vibe. And if Ripley was ever going to pass the baton to, to another character, Hicks, because he was, he was great. So, what rating would I give this audiobook? taking into consideration its many qualities as well as a few shortcomings. Overall, I would rate it as 4 out of 5 stars. Recommended. I think all Alien fans should hear it at least once, maybe even twice. I think the overall production values were spot on. The length, just around 2 hours and 15 minutes, could have been a bit longer, maybe stretched to 3 hours to give us a little bit more action and perhaps a little bit more of Michael Bean's character Hicks during the first hour. Other than that, it was solid stuff. I'm, I'm very happy with this. Again, I will take this over the David Fincher horror show any day of the week. And that's my report. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'm Richard Jack Smith. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.